My name is David Gary. I am the Associate Director of Collections at the Library and Museum of the American Philosophical Society in Philadelphia. Part of my job is to oversee the printed materials and the manuscripts of the Society. And of course, one of those, one of those really amazing manuscript collections, uh, as well as print collections, is, is related to the Lewis and Clark expedition. So here at the APS, we have a wonderful collection of Lewis and Clark materials from the expedition. But APS itself was also involved in the planning of the expedition, so we're actually part of the history here, not just a repository of materials. From April 1803 to June 1803, uh, Mary Weather Lewis was in the Pennsylvania, was, was first in Lancaster and then in Philadelphia, getting training for the expedition. Lewis was Jefferson's secretary, but he was also someone who knew how to operate in the wilderness. He had he was an educated man, but he was coming here to get a sort of, a sort of crash course on how to do the work he was going to be doing in the wilderness and during rough, tough conditions. So first he came to Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and he worked with Andrew Ellicott. Andrew Ellicott was an APS member, and Jefferson asked um, Ellicott and several other members of the APS to, to walk him through various subjects in order to be prepared for what he's going to have to do on the expedition in terms of recording and preserving, recording data and preserving materials. He started with Ellicott. So Andrew Ellicott was one of the best surveyors in the country. Uh, he was surveyor general in the early 1790s. When he met up with Lewis, he had just finished a very large survey of Florida. So he taught Lewis geography and how to find uh, longitude latitude and taught him how to use certain scientific instruments. He was then sent to Philadelphia where he met with four other APS members. He probably met with many other APS members, but Jefferson asked him to meet with four specific people. And related to the geography work, he first went to go see Robert Patterson. Patterson was a, a well-known University of Pennsylvania professor. He had a separate school where he taught people how to take latitude from lunar observations, which is what Lewis would have to do. So Lewis worked with, with, uh, with Patterson for, for a while to figure that out. He also worked with Casper Wistar. Um, Casper Wistar was another vice president of the APS. He was an expert in fossils as well as being a medical doctor. And we don't know exactly what him and Lewis talked about, but no doubt it has something to do with finding prehistoric bones when they were out west. He also met with Benjamin Smith Bartlett, who was a polymath in many different ways, but what he helped Lewis with was botany. Benjamin Smith Barton was one of the best known botanists in America at the time. He had recently published work on botany and taught Lewis how to identify different plants and then how to preserve them. And then lastly, he met with uh, Benjamin Rush, the most famous medical doctor of his time. The document we have here is Benjamin Rush's commonplace book. Rush was one of the most well known doctors in America at the time but he was also very much someone of the Enlightenment who was interested in many different topics. And he was asked to help Lewis understand how he could keep himself and the poor of Discovery healthy, all the, all the members of the expedition. And he advice on how to gather ethnographic data uh, native groups he would meet uh, west. Rush recorded a series of questions that I write his commonplace book here. So a commonplace book is a sort of bucket where you put you know, interesting snippets that you would find from a book, a little bit of a, a quote someplace that you might care about. It's sort of like a catch-all place where you would put your data. So in this case, it's filled with all sorts of different material from different places, and he just made quick notes of all of the questions and advice that he was giving to Lewis here. What happened is probably Lewis made a copy of, of this and took it on the expedition with him. And this was the, the notes that survived for Rush that we now have in the PS library. Some of the advice is kind of fanciful and kind of funny when you think about it. He tells Lewis that flannel should be worn constantly next to the skin, especially in wet weather. After, you know, it says shoes made without heels afford equal action to all the muscles in the legs. It enable you to march with less fatigue. Constipation is often a sign of approaching disease, and when you feel it, take on one or more purgation pills. So the sort of notion that you have to keep your cures in balance by purging blood or bile to get things moving, to change your health, to make your health better. 
So some of the health advice that he gave, but he also asked Lewis to think about certain questions when he met native groups. So he wanted to know about you know, the state of their longevity, when did they marry, what are the provisions for their children, do they ever do voluntary fasting? Did he ask questions about their morals? So he wonders about their vices. He wonders, do they supply a substitute for ardent spirits, promote intoxication? How do they dispose of their dead? This sort of like early anthropological work is what Rush is, is helping Lewis to do. Lewis was very good at recording and observing what he saw uh, when he was out west, partially because of uh, Benjamin Rush you know, and the advice that he gave him. And then lastly, Lewis had a very successful trip here, I would say. He had training. He met with you know, very important people at the APS. He purchased much of his supplies for the first part of the expedition uh, while he was here in Philadelphia. Almost 200 pounds of portable suit, all sorts of um, you know, materials to give to native groups, so like beads and fish hooks. This is also about you know, make sure we have materials to, to be diplomatic when we're going uh, out west. And he must have made a great impression on the people at the APS because this unknown captain was um, elected to the APS in October of 1803, soon after he left Philadelphia.